Good evening. Hope you had a wonderful Saturday in the Lord. We are in the double digits now, Exodus 10. And let me ask you, are you looking forward to being a grandparent if you have not experienced that yet? And maybe it's not a grandparent naturally. Maybe you don't have children naturally. But you still can be a grandmother or an older mentor to a young person, a Titus II woman, or a wise, old, strong man, right? Mm -hmm. Just because the age is there doesn't mean that the might won't be there. But I have, uh, I was talking to my coworkers and I said, that has to be probably the greatest joy. Um, one of the teachers, she, um, have experienced her third grandchild. She was off, and then another coworker was saying she has 10. I said, what a blessing, 10 gifts. Well, in Exodus 10, tell us about it in verse two. This is the reason why we live the way we do. We want to pass it to the next, next generation. And it says, and that thou mayest tell in the ears of thy son, right? We, we, we can speak some negative things into the ears of our children and they pay, pick up and then they run with it and do some foolish things. But we want to tell them of what God has done in our own lives as a testimony and the testimonies of others, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have heard, right? It says, and thou mayest tell in the ears of thy son and of thy son's son, your grandchildren, what things God has done here in this instance, what God has wrought in Egypt and my signs, which I have done among them, that what was the purpose that ye may know how that I am the Lord, right? Deuteronomy 4, 9, that is repeated. Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently. Lest thou forget the things, we don't want to forget, things which thine eyes have seen, unless they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them diligently to thy sons and daughters and thy sons and thy daughters' children, your grandchildren. So then they will replicate it and duplicate it. And that's how you have generational we talk about generational wealth materially and financially. But we're talking about spiritual wealth because when you seek God first in his kingdom, all these other things shall be added. Then you will see like, oh, okay, the Lord has prospered me physically and financially and mentally and emotionally in every way. Mm -hmm. And in Joel 1, 3, it says, tell ye your children of it and let your children tell their children and their children another generation. Like I said, we, we seem to have experienced a hiccup in this um, time that we're in where so many young people that I talk to, they don't know a lot about just basic biblical stories about the parting of the Red Sea, Daniel and the lion's den, um, the real reason we have Christmas and um, the resurrection. Mm -mm. So we have to be diligent. This chapter also talks about another plague where God brought darkness, the locusts filled the earth. Well, we see that it's about to be dark, but we see that God has filled his presence with his faithfulness. That's why every night we want to jot down what the Lord has done. I mean, if we, we would never go to sleep because he has done so much, but let us just, just bask in his his glory and his presence ever worshiping and preparing for a glorious time tomorrow in a place that you choose to meet with god's people i hope you have a wonderful evening just celebrating god's goodness good night